Hello, welcome to Vet Talk, the veterinary podcast. I'm Dr. Nathan. Thanks for listening. This is an informational podcast, and we hope you find it a valuable tool to help you understand veterinary medicine and how to better care for your animals. If you want to contact us, please reach out to theveterinarypodcast at gmail.com. You can find a complete list of the podcast episodes on SoundCloud or by going to lickingvalleyvet.com and finding the education page. While you are there, take a look at our blog section for more helpful information. You can also follow Licking Valley Veterinary Hospital's Facebook page if you want regular updates on released podcasts, blogs, and videos. If you find this information helpful, please feel free to make a donation to the continuation of this content. There is a link to do this on the webpage under the podcast list. As always, thanks for listening, and I hope this information is helpful to you. Today we will start the first of multiple episodes on health certificates, the pointless piece of paper that is supposed to save our agricultural industry. Health certificates, or CVIs, Certificates of Veterinary Inspection, proves a veterinarian has looked at an animal and deemed it healthy of infectious diseases. This is needed for travel with animals. First, a big disclaimer here. If you need a health certificate, do three things. First, figure out where you are headed. While there are laws regulating health certificates, individual places or events can have extra qualifications for animals traveling to them. You need to find this out before scheduling your veterinary appointment so you can tell your veterinarian if you need anything specific. Second, call your vet. I know the local laws regarding health certificates and what most of my clients need so we can get you started with the basics. Third, check out interstatelivestock.com. This is an easy to use site that asks you a few questions to determine what you need to travel to a specific location. My staff uses this site a lot to help figure out what we need to get for clients. Next, if your vet tells you they don't do health certificates, don't get upset. Health certificates are specifically licensed by the USDA and there are different types of legal abilities and qualifications that veterinarians can maintain. Basically, there are two levels, level one and level two. Level one allows a veterinarian to write health certificates for small animals. Level 2 is designed for large animal vets, giving them the ability to write health certificates for large animals, like cattle and horses, in addition to small animals. Many vets who are in a small animal practice only will not maintain a level 2 license and just get level 1 accreditation. So before you bring your horse to your favorite small animal vet, make sure that vet can legally help you. A brief discussion now on the health certificate looks. For years, health certificates were a piece of paper. In the past few years, many private companies and states are looking into taking care of health certificates digitally. As you know, I sort of like technology. But I have stayed away from the digital health certificates. I have done this for a few reasons. One, my state supplies me for free the supplies I need to write health certificates. Typically, With private companies, they are wanting to make money, and when I get charged for something, I pass that charge on to the client. That increases my prices, which clients resist. Also, one of these companies lied to me about some laws trying to get me to buy their product, which really shut me down to wanting to purchase from them. And the companies forget that living in rural Kentucky, I have many clients that don't use computers or have internet which means I'm wasting more ink to print hard copies of things for clients, which again increases the prices I have to push towards the consumer. Anyway, what I will be doing in the next few episodes is explaining how to fill out these papers. While the format will likely change in the future, certain information will still be needed, and that is what I want to give you in these episodes. Speaking of information, have information ready. Your vet has to fill out a form, and the more information you have readily available, the more quickly he can get that done and get on his way. 
So let's get through an equine health certificate and see what we need to have ready. First, a vet will mark whether your horse is traveling intra-state or inter-state. We have to remember, in the United States, we are 50 states, each with their individual laws. There are laws of traveling within the state and laws of travel between each state. The federal law is the minimum law, but each state can have stricter laws. If we are traveling intra-state, that means you are staying within the state. In Kentucky, a horse intra-state health certificate is good for one year from the date it is written. If I mark interstate or the horse is traveling out of state, the health certificate is only valid for 30 days. This confuses many people, as many of my clients think their intra-state health certificate good for Kentucky travel for the year also gets them into other states. This is not true. We cannot even write other states on an in-state health certificate. We have to write individual health certificates for the states that are being traveled to and those are only good for 30 days. If you travel to Ohio from Kentucky with an only intrastate health certificate, you are traveling illegally and could be turned around or fined. Next, I mark whether the horse is moving for racing, training, breeding, show, trail ride, sale, or other. Self-explanatory. Then I mark whether the animal is traveling via truck, air, rail, or other. So far, I have only in 11 years marked truck as the way the animal is traveling. I'm cool with that. But if you want to load your horse on a plane or a train, I can mark that for you. Next is just the basics owner name or consigner. This is the person who owns the horse or the person sending the goods. This is the person who owns the horse at the time of the health certificate being written or is in charge of sending the horse. A lot of times I have young people taking their horse to the shows so I will mark little Susie's name but put their parents name in parentheses. Then I put their address and the physical location of the horse address. This is if the horse is at a different location than the owner's primary address, i.e. at a barn where the horse owner doesn't live. This is important for tracking the horse in the case of an outbreak of disease. Next, I put the consignee, or the place slash person the horse is going to. With their name and address and the address the horse is going, for example, like I said before, the horse owner may live in one place and the horse lives in another. Again, this is all for tracking purposes. A lot of times for intrastate Kentucky certificates, I will just put Kentucky Show and Trail. They have a health certificate good for a year and can travel within the state to whatever shows or trail rides they need. Out of state or interstate, I need to be much more specific. I have to write specific addresses to where horses are going. If you are going to multiple locations in one trip, I need to have those multiple addresses so someone inspecting that health certificate knows where you are going and where you have been. This is information you need to have ready for your vet. Have the addresses of where you are going because your vet has no idea. If that is ready, he can fill that out or have it pre-filled for your appointment, which makes the appointment go much smoother and more efficiently. Please remember, complete addresses have zip codes. I like doing Google searches for things like, how often do Muscovy ducks lay eggs? Is Amelia Clark still single? Where are good places to go whitewater rafting? Not, what is the zip code for monkey's eyebrow? Yes, that's a town, look it up. Next, I have a spot to make comments that I need to and a place to put a permit number as some states require permit numbers. Permit number is where the vet contacts the state, in essence to notify the state animals are coming and receive permission in the form of a number that the animals can come to that state. Then finally, on to horsey things. I can put up to 10 horses on one health certificate, and that does not mean you have to take every horse on the health certificate. I know one show wanted individual health certificate papers for individual horses. They were just being jerks. You can have 10 horses on the piece of paper and only travel with one. It's fine. I charge per animal per health certificate. If I write for one animal, I charge for one. 
and if I write for 10, I charge for 10. Some vets will charge per piece of paper. In the end, you are just paying the vet for his time and license, which allows you to travel because the government deems we as veterinarians should give our stamp of approval that the horse won't transmit disease. So now the horse information. First, we put if the horse has a tattoo or an ID. If not, we draw a line through that box. Second, the horse's name, breed, color, age, sex, and temperature at the time of the exam. Next is something we have to have for equine health certificates. We have to have the EIA or Coggins test date. Equine infectious anemia, EIA, is a test required for horses to travel. To travel, you must have proof of a negative Coggins and a health certificate. If you want to know more about this disease, take a listen to my last episode called Coggins. But for travel, you can't have just a Coggins to travel and you can't have a health certificate without a negative Coggins. Personally, I think intrastate-wise, a Coggins and health certificate should be combined to make it easier on people to travel, but I'm not an elected official in charge of things, so I work with what I have. But be careful who you get your information from. Once I had a University of Kentucky Agricultural Extension agent who has been around horses most of his life, tried to get me to write a health certificate without proof of a negative Coggins test. I explained to him he needed that negative Coggins test. He insisted I should just write him a health certificate without the Coggins, thus forging legal documents and potentially spreading a deadly disease. I was not happy with the quality of his character and did not write him his health certificate. Anyway, we put the EIA test date, the result, the lab that ran the test, and the accession number for that test. That is all the horse information we need. If I don't fill out 10 horses on a health certificate, I draw lines through the rest of the blank so someone cannot forge another horse onto the certificate. I'll talk about how people try to do this when we get to our other large animal health certificates. Then I put the date I examined the horse, sign my name, and print my name, and put my veterinary clinic information on the form so people can track me down if they have questions. So what have I done here? Well, I have a document that should help trace an outbreak, if there is one, and allows people to travel. According to the fine print on the document, I certify as an accredited veterinarian that the above described animals have been inspected by me on this date and that they are not showing signs of infection and or communicable disease except where noted. The vaccinations and results of tests are as indicated on the certificate. To the best of my knowledge, the animals listed on this certificate meet the state of destination and federal interstate requirements. No warranty is made or implied. Well, that sounded legal, because it is. This is a legal document, but what this is saying is I, as a licensed vet, do not see contagious disease. I love tricking or trying to trick my veterinary students with this question. I ask if they can write a health certificate for a horse with a broken leg, and most of the time the students say no. And I'm like, why not? Broken legs don't transmit to give other horses broken legs. People think CVIs mean the horse doesn't have problems. That's not the case at all. The horse doesn't have noticeable problems of diseases that can spread. I don't care if the horse has a tendon issue or a broken leg or colic or laminitis. As a USDA vet for the health certificate, all I care is if the horse has signs of disease that can be transmitted. Of course, you see some of the issue here. The health certificate is my observations on one day. The horse could start showing signs the next day of a communicable disease. This isn't a foolproof method, just like with Coggins, as I discussed in my last episode. The Coggins test shows the horse negative the day the blood is drawn, not afterwards. What we are doing with both Coggins and health certificates is limiting the spread of disease. In state, we feel people can travel if the horses are examined once a year. 
out of state, we want that within a month, so we are catching more potential problems to prevent the spread of disease. Another thing CVIs don't do is attest to vaccinations. I could list what vaccines horses get on a health certificate, but I don't think I ever have, because a horse can be healthy and free of disease and not be vaccinated. So please, if you see a health certificate, don't believe a horse has or is up to date on its vaccinations unless it specifically states such. As vets, we are looking for signs of nasal discharge, skin disease, neurologic disease, proof of a negative Coggins, and other things that could spread and hurt horses at large. Health certificates are not for individual horses in a grand sense. They are to protect our state, horse, herd, or our nation's horse herd. After this, I have four pieces of carbon copy paper. One I keep from my records, one goes to the owner, one goes to the state the vet originated in, and one goes to the state the horse is traveling to. I'm also really nice, and at my clinic will scan a copy of the health certificate and email it to owners so they have a copy in their email in case they lose their original. Most states, excluding the land of the golden mouse, i.e. Florida, We'll accept digital copies, so I know this has saved a few people when they have been traveling and lost their papers. Anyway, that's the lowdown on equine health certificates. Remember, health certificates need a negative Coggins test. Health certificates are good in-state for one year and out-of-state for 30 days, at least in regards to Kentucky. Check with your local vet for more specific regulations for your locality. Otherwise, if you find this information helpful, please follow and share our podcast with your friends. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Nathan. I hope this information was helpful to you and gives you a little more perspective on the world. If you want to reach out to us, email us at theveterinarypodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to tell your friends about our podcast and check out LickingValleyVet.com for information on blogs, videos, and the complete list of podcasts in our education section.